Nigerian women are not just doing their stuff in one center. They are scattered across the ends of the earth. Today I am in Benin and guess what? I am going to be having a conversation with a woman who has so much influenced my life for such a long time. And um, she actually did it without knowing who is my guest. Let's find out after this time out. I don't think in gender boxes at all. I just get on with it. A man that would dare to ask the wife, who do you think you are? Dad is a real man. In fact, our husbands are our firstborns. The husband needs more attention than even the children. It's not only about work. It's not only about family. They need to take the time to look after themselves. And we don't. We don't do that. They took my money. I paid every fees. I never asked to be hoisted as a governor. I wanted to be allowed to go out there and contest for the position of uh, a governorship candidate first. There's nothing greater than looking back and seeing that while you were aspiring, you were able to inspire others. Empower to women. Yes. We need to have more women, more multitaskers around Nigeria to get Nigeria working. Definitely. Okay, if you're just joining us, the program is The Woman and you're right on time. I have a guest here, right here in Benin, a woman who's touched several lives, including mine. A woman I've so looked forward to meeting and today God bless me with that opportunity. She is the Archbishop of the Church of God's Mission International and the Chancellor of Benson Idahosa University. Please join me as I welcome what someone I want to gladly call mommy, except she doesn't look like it. Archbishop <laughs> Margaret Benson Idahosa. I, I, I'm tempted to call you mommy because I should actually do that. But you don't look like mommy. You look like um, 50s. Oh. And uh, I keep asking myself, what do you do to oh. keep it up? That would be a question for later oh, uh, in the course of this program. But I'd like to go first. Your husband, the Archbishop, he was known as Papa Idahusa. A lot of people called him Baba as well. He started this journey for all of us. And long before he started, you knew about him. And long before he met you, he was already a man of God. But I'm wondering, a lot of people get daunted marrying men of God. You were not. What was, uh, what was the attraction for you? Well, thank you very, very much for you coming to be me and to come to my office to find a certain thing that we do. I'm glad to let you know that uh, when I knew him, he was not a pastor. We, we, we normally call him Brother Benson because he, 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 with his bicycle from one street to the other, sharing trucks and, and all that. I knew him as that. But as time went on, when I left the college, and he came and said that he wants my hand in marriage, I said, oh, no, you don't have to do that. I have known you as a brother because I'm an only child. And when I met him, I took him as my brother. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, what will I tell people? What will I tell my friends? But he insisted. And as soon as he said that, something happened on the inside of me. And I said, this man is really real. So we just started talking and all that. And today, this is uh, where we are. You have lived with him, or you lived with him for a while before he passed on. Oh, it's yes, about uh, yes. two decades now. Yes. I'm wondering, what was life with your husband like for you? Uh, I mean, we lived as husband and wife. We lived as brother and sister. We lived as my pastor, my archbishop, my lord, and, and all that. You know, I'm trying to, you, you've mentioned a whole lot of things. I'm trying to create a picture in my mind. I'm sure a lot of people will be doing the same. You know, wondering, at what point does she know this man is the archbishop, not my husband? At what point does she know this man is my husband? Not, how do you, you know, put the, the, the brick wall against each of the apartments? You know, when we are at home, 
is Benson Idaosa. Oh. To me and the children, mm -hmm. we laugh, we fall on each other. At times, he, he backs me up, and I mean, I put him on my back, I'm crying, and I say, no, that, and the children too. But when he is at the church, I accord him the respect and the dignity that he commands for his office. And that's it. So when, he's, when he comes back home, I say, forget that one, old boy. Nah, now how should they so? <laughs> but, you know, that's how we manage. Uh, no, not manage. That's how we lead. Every morning, I kneel down to greet him. My Lord, the sugar in my tea. How's your morning? Great. What are we up for today? But when we have guests, I let them know that he is the head of this family. He is my Lord. He is everything to me and the children. That's a whole lot but to me. When we are on our own in the evening, we sit down, we chat, we, we, we do like boyfriend and girlfriend and children coming in like uh, just like that. Many times when, when both of us are talking and the children are prognosing, my husband will say, listen, this is my time with my wife. So when it is my time with you all, she has no right to come in. Now this is my time with my husband. I'm nervous. Sorry, sir, we are, we are sorry to <laughs> so leave. That's how we live. It's a beautiful family. Okay. okay. As you make your bed, so you lie on it, they say. But then, talking about your husband's dream, he had so much. At a point, he told you he thought he had finished what God told him to do on earth. But then you continued to carry on. You held on the light. You have been holding it up to your date. I'm wondering, being a lady, being a woman, being a widow at a point, up till now, you, what, what are the challenges like for you? To myself, Margaret? I think I have finished everything that God told me. I said, oh, no, 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 you need to travel. Because each time he travels abroad, he comes out with a fresh idea. vision and ideas. And uh, I said, honey, you need to travel. He said, no, I'm telling you the truth. You know, he was telling me that he is preparing to leave. But me, as a wife, I said, oh no, you need to travel and when you go, you, you are by yourself and the Lord will begin to reveal certain things for you to add to us in the ministry. But he said, no. He said, I now live for posterity and not prosperity. Prosperity. Prosperity, that is the thing that we live after me. So we just joked about it and then we traveled. We both traveled together. When we finished, she said, Honey, I want you to go see the children because all the children were living abroad and school and all that. I said, No, I, I said at home that I will travel with you and return with you. He said, No, you go see about their fees, see about their dawn, see about that. You know a woman when you talk to a woman about her children and touch her heart. I said, okay, honey, I will. I was seated in the city room with my sister when I had, uh, when I heard a telephone and he said, daddy wants you at home now. He's not feeling where he's, he wants you to sit by him. I said, you have to tell me the truth. Because since we got married, he has never been sick to letting me know that I need to sit by him. And I said, no, something is wrong. No, he said, no, nothing is wrong and all that. And that was it. Then my sister from just now gave me a call and said, listen, you are a woman of God. I need to tell you the truth. I don't need to beat about the bush. Archbishop Benson in the house is going to be with the Lord. It was like music in my ear. And I said, what? We have just spoken. You know, when, when he's uh, out of town or he's traveled uh, a long distance, we talk as if 
it's a boyfriend and girlfriend uh, matter. And I just finished talking to him. Just few minutes after that, he told, he, he, somebody told me that well, he's going to be with the Lord. I mean, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was like a dream, or I, I, I you know, I, I couldn't just you know, uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, my childhood boyfriend, now my husband, now he's gone. I, I was 55 when he left, and I didn't know what to do. But thanks be unto God today that I was not disobedient to the heavenly voice. We're good. We're happy you did not. But um, a lot of people would have remarried at that tender age. You didn't. What happened? My dear, once is more than enough. Once. It's more than enough to be married. I just told myself it's enough for me. I have all my children. I, did, I, I don't need a home. I don't need security. I don't need children. I don't need uh, 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 to scare for what I will eat for life. Definitely. You know, these are the things that a woman would definitely need. I need security. I need a home, I need protection, I need the uh, uh, finance uh, support and all that. This he did before he left. And I said, it's enough for me. So right. there was no need for me to look out for a man. To, for what? what? What will he have? What will he do for me? You know? Plus the big ministry left behind. So I, I just decided, Lord, I'm married to you now. Because your word declares you are the husband of the widow. I accept that. Anything that will give me an urge on the inside to desire a man, kill it. And God did it for me. Uh, and I, I, I don't miss it. You know, I miss him, but I don't miss it. You understand what yes, I'm I saying? Do. So I, I'm happy. It was a taboo at the time to even see a woman on the pulpit. But you came on board, you took the bull by the horn, and drove it to the apex. How did you, you know, how did you surmount all the challenges of being a woman in the, in the vineyard of the Lord? You know, before he left, he has always pulled me along. It was me that was pulling myself back. I said, no, honey, it's you that... God called. He didn't call me. I'm, I'm just here as a help to meet your need. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, no, I want you to know that as long as I'm here, as I'm called, I'm calling you. So we, he, he, he never left me behind. Plus, each time he asked me to do anything at the pulpit, I would say, honey, what are you doing this? He listen. When Paul said women should keep quiet in church, at home, he said, you weren't there. Were you there? I said, no, I wasn't there. So Paul wasn't talking to you. <laughs> so talk, open your mouth. You have a vocal organ that cannot be sidetracked or sidelined. Open your mouth and speak. I don't know challenges, you know, from the male folk you know, doing what you were doing, especially when you became an archbishop? Number one, when, when I was put into this position, I went to God and I said, God, you know, I live in a man's world. Uh, it is hard for women to be called bishop, and now archbishop. It, 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 it. It's, it's, it's not common. But you know, God told me, Margaret, I thought I made you in my image. And if the spirit in a man comes out, and the spirit in a woman comes out, they are the same. There's no difference. No difference at all. And I said, okay, God, that's fine. Then he told me, Margaret, I am not female specific or gender specific. And I said, okay, God, if you are not gender specific, 
whatever you say, I will do it. And I started doing it. And the first meeting I had with all the bishops, and I told them, I said, listen, this is the job that our bishop has left for us. And I know that you all are men, but as God has put me here, I want us to join our hand to work together. And one of them said, oh yes, uh, you are now. Give us, a, give us your deputy. You must give us your deputy. I, I will give you my deputy, but allow me to seek God's face. I don't want to make the first mistake. I want to seek God's face and bring it to you all to let you know who is my deputy. And for two weeks, God did not speak. And I was just in the, in, the, in the bathroom one morning, and God spoke to me loud and clear and said, Margaret, every bishop is your deputy. The one in Abba is your deputy. The one in Agbo is your deputy. The one in Wari is your deputy. The one in Lagos is your deputy. The one in Abuja is your deputy. And so I was so happy and I called and I said, God has given us uh, uh, the deputy. And we all came, we prayed together. And I told them, God spoke to me and said, every one of you is my deputy. That's amazing, very amazing. Now, as the Archbishop of one of the largest churches in Nigeria and the Chancellor of a great city of learning, yeah, University. University. Now, I also know that your mom, you, you've said it too many times here for us, a very loving one too. I'm wondering, how do you juggle your activities as a Chancellor, as an Archbishop, as an Administrator, and as a mother? Uh, it depends on priority. I prioritize my activities. When it is time to be at home with the children, I'm at home with them. Uh, but now they are all grown, they are all married, so that one has no problem at all. When I'm in the office, I know I am in the office. And um, I don't carry the office to the house. When I finish, I close and I'm gone. The next day, I do what I'm supposed to do. Then, I, I don't carry grudges. You know, the thing that can make you to be old as a gagu is grudge. I told you I was going to get a secret. You see, I'm getting ah. a <laughs> Grudge, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness as a dagger. It takes, it goes to your throat and to the throat of the guy that you are annoyed with or that you have refused to forgive. But when you forgive, I mean, you are at ease, you are at peace. So I have to free my mind, I have to be um, straight in my mind to do the work of God. Yes. So that's, that's what has been. Okay, we are learning from you and uh, we intend to implement what we have learned. Oh, and yeah. if you do, you will live a peaceful life. I sure will. And I know that um, you just told us you have grandchildren. Yes. And I'm wondering, what has a, grandchildren, a grandmotherhood done to your life? How Ooh. does it feel? Ah, I feel elated. I feel good on the inside. For me to know, you, you know, you know why it's different for me. I got married, and for years I didn't have children. Oh. And after about five years, before God opened my home, and it was like a crash program, one, two, three, four, just like that. I believe yes, yeah, every every day, <laughs> just like that. And so when they all grew and started getting married and having children, it was like heaven on earth for me. Who would have thought that I would even have children? Not to talk of having grandchildren. So I love them and uh, you know when they come to the house now, spoil them. oh my God, I sit on the floor and they sit around me. We are playing some on my back and we are crawling and all that. It's a joy. It's a fulfillment.
from God that I'm not only a mother, I'm a grandmother. And I believe I will be a great grandmother. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you, oh, need, yeah. if you need help to carry someone, just call me. My <laughs> now, I see uh, a lot of women around you. You've trained. It's um, a thing of joy for all of us, you know, to see that not only you stepped out, you also decided to carry other people along. But there are a lot of women who are called, but they are scared of coming out. What would be your advice to such people? Number one. If I live a hundred years, two hundred years, and my life cannot impact anyone, it means my living is in vain. God said in his word that when you know God, make him known. When you have talent, the talent that God has given me, it's not just for me to eat and drink. It is for me to pass it on. Mas Moro said, uh, 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 "There are, I mean, the richest place on this planet Earth is very ground, or very ground, or the cemetery, because many songs that were not sung were are buried in the graveyard. Many talents, many." Many things that God has embedded in people's lives that would have benefited others were not done and they were buried alive. Me, I want to die empty. I don't want to die full. I want to die empty. Every gift and talent that God has given me from the foundation of the earth, I want to be able to transmit it into other lives, especially women. I want to encourage every woman, if you are called according, according to what you said, I want to encourage you. I want to fan those gifts into a flame so that you can be all that God has asked you to, to, to be. You know, by the time we finish on, the, on this planet Earth, God is not going to ask you, hey, were you married? Hey, how many kids did you have? No, 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 no. What about the gifts? and the talents that are embedded in you, what did you do with it? What's the secret of this youth and beauty? Uh, <laughs> I said I was going to extract it. You gave me one. Oh, yes. Uh, so and, I want and that, is, uh, that is the truth. That is the truth. Uh, I wake up early in the morning, do my prayers, uh, go to the gym, if there is time for that. Like today, when I didn't work out. Oh yes, I do. Oh, I have really? a small gym in my house. It's not a lot. I mean, maybe treadmill and I do all that. Just for 10-15 minutes and go into the sauna and I come out. But most importantly is no grudge. All right, thank you so much. You've been such an inspiration as always. Even when I knew you from a distance, you inspired me, like I said. And meeting you one on one hasn't been any different, except you added more to it. Thank you so much. Thank and you. if I haven't picked anything today, I've picked the fact that um, if I want to enjoy my life, I must learn to influence other people's lives, you know, positively speaking. And um, for those of us who are wives at home, uh, if you want to have your honor, give it first to your husband. The program is The Woman, and you know my name already, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure always to bring you the spaces of women in Nigeria. I'll see you again next week. First of all, we have to go back to a writer who is uh, very well known for teaching skills. Your students uh, speak a whole lot about you. Miss Nigeria competition. Yeah, I said, you know, let's pick them up, uh, let's take them back to Nigeria, and let's teach them a different kind of job.
NTAE brings you the best of entertainment. I thought I was being sarcastic. I went on to do other productions. Everything.